Hi everybody, so today we are going to be walking through how to tag SEO keywords to your websites and even maybe your YouTube videos and other kind of social media posts so that you can hopefully get Google and Yahoo and Bing to see your content a little bit easier. So this is my advice as somebody that has been working in the search engine space for over 15 years. I have been a professional taxonomist. I have been a search engine engineer. I have worked on many knowledge graphs and ways for people to find information. That's kind of what I really focus on. Now, this is very different than the advice that I would give on traditional taxonomy indexing because in an enterprise search, you are dealing with a very different end user and you're not fighting against millions upon millions upon millions of other web pages, which is what you're doing in a commercial search engine. So the first thing we're going to go over are out of the top website creation tools out there so that if you are using any of these, maybe this will be helpful. I'm not going to go over how to apply these SEO tags. These sites have whole walkthroughs on how to do that. I will link those down below in case you don't know how to do that. I will also share with you which I think is doing a better job as far as what they do for the user, i.e. you if you are creating your website. Now, I will preface, this is not sponsored because I know Squarespace <laughs> sponsors a lot of videos. This video is not sponsored by Squarespace. However, as a professional in the SEO space, I will say that their game is like different level than the others. That does not mean the others are not good. Maybe SEO isn't the most important thing to you. Um, and all of them do a decent job with SEO, right? Like if you go with any of these, you're not gonna go wrong. So enough about that. You can pick whichever one you feel comfortable with. So we are going to be featuring Rebel Coffee Shop. And this is something that is in uh, the Boston area. If you're ever up here, you go check them out. Also not sponsored by them, <laughs> but we're gonna be using them as an example so that we can start to create a keyword list for SEO. Really, you wanna think about what makes you special, right? What sets you apart from anybody else? And you might say, well, we have the best coffee, but what makes you the best coffee? If somebody was searching for your specific brand of special, what words would they use to describe what you do and what makes you so valuable for them to find? And then you have to put yourself in the shoes of the quester, right? So you are on a quest. You are that user and you're like, I am on a quest to find the most unique coffee blend in New England or whatever it is. I am on a quest to find the best SEO video done by somebody with lots of experience, right? No, I'm joking. Um, so whatever it is that you think a person is going to be seeking and that you as a consumer would be happy to receive that asset, that website, that, that answer back, that is what you really want to focus on. You know, you really have to understand when people are going to whichever site, in this case for, for coffee, it's going to likely be Google or Yelp or something. Um, when it's YouTube, you know people are going to YouTube. So now you have a smaller piece of the commercial web, but it's still pretty big. YouTube is pretty big. So how would you imagine your video showing up amongst all the other videos that could come up for, for that topic? And so there are a ton of other videos on, you know, SEO specific to name your Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, whatever it is. There are a lot of different strategies on each platform. So you do want to do some investigation in whichever platform you are selecting to do this on. For instance, with YouTube, you know, going in and typing in uh, what is or how to and then focusing on whatever your videos are focused on. So for me, it would be like data science or machine learning or knowledge graph. I would be able to see some of the auto suggests. That means YouTube is telling me those are really important to their specific users. Well, that's helpful for me. If I want to show up with all of the rest of those videos, I should probably have some of those as my tags on my video. Again, not being clickbaity, making sure that is actually what my video is about and then supplementing 
with some of the more unique things that I do so that I stand out in a crowd. That's the other piece to the search engine game is mixing the unique with the things that are just accurate. Like this is a coffee shop, right? That's what it is. <laughs> it's good for Google to know that. Plus the things that make you unique. But it's also understanding, you know, how do you stand out, but also integrate yourself with things that are more common and things that are trending and things that are coming up in people's minds. That's that's one aspect, right? The trend aspect. But there's a different aspect that you can go against, and that is the evergreen content. People will constantly be asking, how do I change my oil? Constantly. And are there videos out there that have millions and millions of views because they're really good and they're very old? Yes, <laughs> but they're evergreen content because the way you change your oil isn't going to change. Or if you're doing something with um, how to make an omelet, well, that's evergreen content because you it's an, on, an omelet is an omelet. But maybe um, you have for your social media posts, you do something very special with your omelets and it's not trending, it's something that's new, but once it comes out, you've kind of set your mark. You've said, I am the one who came up with this thing, or I am the one who said, this is really special and I'm going to be known for it. So some of the other things that you want to do is you want to make sure whatever tags for SEO you're putting on your page also match a lot of the words in the text on your page. So does that mean you spam it again? No, Google is on to you, okay? What you wanna do is when you are thinking about the words that you put on the screen, you want to make sure that you really um, use those words wisely. So Google has a lot of sophistication, but I'm gonna simplify it here, where think about every word on the page as a point, right? So if you have uh, a, a 300 word paragraph, you have 300 points to work with. Google is gonna look at every single one of those words or those points, and it's gonna say, okay, how many of those points, those words, match up to what the user typed into Google? So the more points you have that match what the search was on the user side and what your page actually has is, is going to win you um, better favor for Google. So you want to use the words wisely. So be sharp and crisp and, and on point. Don't use a lot of fluff. Um, I actually think Grammarly is, a gr again, not sponsored. Um, another way uh, to, to do this is really great with Grammarly because it simplifies your, your terminology. It actually helps you get on point a little bit better. But also don't sound like a robot. <laughs> right? You wanna make sure that you still do all of the lovely things that humans need, right? You need to come across as warm and friendly and helpful and whatever vibe you want, like cool and sexy, whatever it is, the vibe that you have for your business, make sure that comes through, right? So SEO should not override those things. Um, so once you go through those three steps, you're going to have a list, right? You're going to have a list of words. Once you have that list, what you're going to do now is you're going to go over to Google Trends. So you're going to start to type in these words and you're going to see how much they are trending. Now, if these are something that are really unique, meaning they're not trending, that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. It means that you actually might stand out a lot if somebody typed that word in. But you have to feel very confident about that. Like, really? You think that, that your stuff, this word that, that you're using for your stuff is so unique that so many people that are on Google on everyday basis aren't searching on it. Okay, you gotta be pretty confident about that because those odds are slim. Could be though, very much like, you know, there's a lot of people coming up with amazing things and they are coming up with new terminology for stuff all the time. So I'm not discounting that. So I'm just saying, if you don't see something trending, it doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. But what it also could mean is maybe that's the not the most popular word for that thing. So maybe farm to table is going down. Maybe um, handmade is going down in popularity. Maybe people are using a different word for that. But go to your th look, you know, your thesaurus and start to look up other words that mean similar things, or start to do Google searches and tr start to find other terms that you might be able to use. Plug them into Google Trends to see if they are more popular. Now we're going to get into the next piece, which is how many tags, right? 
So in most of these applications, they have a maximum amount of tags. You do not need to use all of them. <laughs> Again, with the spamming, you do not need to spam the search and put every single tag you could possibly think. The most accurate and the thing that's going to set you apart is going to be more valuable than, remember the point system? So if you have, I think Squarespace allows you to add 30 tags per page. So if you have 30 points to work with, you don't want to spend half of those points or even five of those points on things that aren't that valuable. Now, the last thing I will go over here is once you get your SEO set up, don't set it and forget it. Make sure you go back and constantly be looking at, you know, how to refresh the terms that you're using, which ones are trending, which ones are going out of style, which ones are changing vernacular. What are you now focusing on that you weren't focusing on before? All of those things you need to constantly be monitoring your tags so that you can stay relevant and you know that you are tracking who comes to your site, how they're coming to your site. If you're using something like YouTube, it actually shows you uh, which search terms people find your videos with. That's really good. Maybe you should add that to the tags of your video. So making sure that you monitor this and again, depending on what kind of content you create, this you know, website we're looking at here is coffee. Well, if they have new items, maybe it's a seasonal update that they do um, because they're, you know, carrying different coffee and maybe different food based on the season. So these are some areas that you can really focus on to make your SEO a little bit better. These are things that I know from a search engine perspective are incredibly helpful. And I hope this is at least maybe informative for you if you are already adding tags to assets of any sort. All right, so with that, I want to thank you very much, and I'll catch you next time.